Since there is in fact no way that you can see everything in a day, even on a long summer day, this is impromptu in October, so our days are a little bit shorter. Uh, if you stopped at every single marker, you, you, you would barely make it through the park, if at all, in a single day. But right now, we're gonna tighten up uh, on this Union line, and we're gonna look for the Irish Brigade battle marker, which is a significant portion, not only in history, but in the hearts of every Irish American <laughs> who's right. ever came since. It sure is. You know, sometimes you just see things that are a little bit odd, but that's a fucking mailbox. There's the a residence up there. Yeah, here's the here's the, the view from. Yeah, it's a modern residence. Yeah. Right up that road. I wonder what the property value is. You, probably you, you probably were, pretty steep. You were right about stopping at every monument. You'd be here for a while. Yeah. You have to be a real holdout. Like. I'm sure everybody else was like, yeah, I'll donate my land, or I, I'm fucking, people were moving right after the war. There were people moving as soon as the freaking uh, bullets started flying. The they already had their it. stuff packed, yeah, the stick of it alone. But uh, I don't know when they came into that uh, dwelling, but you'd have to be a real holdout to still be here living on uh, Gettysburg proper Look, in the middle of the park. Look, there you get a good view. Yeah. That's a house, It's a real house. Probably not original though. Alright, right now we are in the kill zone below, a little round top, which is up there. As denoted by the New York's uh, emplacement of their memorial. What was that? The uh, 44th. 44th? New York. Yeah. 44th New York is uh, definitely proud of that unit. Or I should say the state of New York is definitely proud of that unit because they basically put a castle on top of a little round top Let everybody know that they held the hill But uh, they were firing down on here Are we uh, right above Devil's Den? Yeah, Devil's Den is right here. Yeah, so Right down through in there And we'll get down into where the boulders are where the snipers were uh, in place taking their pot shots up at the hill And you'll get to see uh, you get to see that death trap. I don't know if it was called Devil's Den prior to, but it sure as hell was afterwards. GoPro, stop recording. Uh, I'm over here ignorant to the fact of whether or not it was called Devil's Den prior to or afterwards, and he's over here telling me that Tulsa Doom's living in there with a 30-foot snake eating people. Freaking Conan the Barbarian shit up in here. It was what was called, that snippet of it was, history? It was called Devil's Den before this because there was a snake, supposedly, a 30-foot snake that was eating people, and they called it Devil's Den. I don't know if that's true, but before I start making any kind of statements, I'm going to start asking you questions before I start recording. <laughs> Should have been doing that from the beginning. <laughs> so here we are walking in and around Devil's Den, and uh, usually large rock formations that have uh, some sort of resonance and uh, geological magnetism that are named after uh, things like, you know, devil's anus, uh, Satan's uh, armpit, all those things. Uh, there tend to be a large degree of people who go missing in and around them. Not here at Gettysburg. It's, it's pretty hard to go missing here. But, uh, yeah, I've, I've been, uh, like I said, following a little David Politis on that and it's just one of those things in history where you have these, um, what'd you call them the other day? Echoes? You have these echoes of history in and around them, especially where there's large losses of lives and people that go missing. But uh, this is notably one of those places where people see the orbs of Gettysburg. And I usually don't get into like the uh, cryptozoology or even uh, cr uh, cryptophiology or whatever they call it but uh, this is definitely part of American lore
So this information marker right here outlines the slaughter at Devil's Den. And they talk about uh, bloody uh, skirmishes fought between the rocks and the Confederates being annihilated by, uh, by artillery bombardment. And uh, the Confederate sharpshooters holding this, this position for the remainder of the battle. But uh, what they don't talk about is the uh, posed war dead for propaganda footage. That's not a real photo. I mean, it's a real photo, but those, those guys are posed days after the actual uh, battle. All right, so now that we've went up to Devil's Den, we're doubling back here, uh, coming past the wheat field again on Sickles Avenue. And then uh, just up ahead around this turn, it's going to be the Irish Brigade marker. And now we approach the Irish Brigade monument, which was a large, a, moment. a large part and portion of this pilgrimage. Denoted by the Celtic Cross and the Wolfhound. All the Union brigades in the Union Army during the Civil War. None took more casualties than the Irish Brigade. Uh -huh. Balabar or something like that. Something, I can't pronounce it. But they they also, in Fredericksburg, when they had to go up the, uh, I forget what it was called. I don't know. They, it was a bad position. They crossed they crossed the river, go through the town, and then they had the, they, Mary's Heights is what it was. The Irish Brigade charged twice, was mown, mowed down. But on the other side, the uh, stone wall that they were defending, the Confederates were defending down. There was also an Irish brigade, but of the Confederates. Just so happened that those Irishmen came, their port of entry was Louisiana, not uh, New York. So they saw that it was an Irish brigade, and they actually took their hats off to them. And wait, after their second time, they actually took their hats off and waved them down. You were saying? No, the monument we're going to see is uh, Father uh, William Corby. And he was the chaplain for the Irish Brigade. And the, the significance of that is before the battle commenced, he gave absolution to all of them. And Pretty nice thing to have. So the whole brigade was on a knee. They have pictures of it. And they have a lot of paintings of, you know, Cor Father Corby with his hand up, giving absolution to all the Irish Brigade. And uh, he later became the president of the University of Notre Dame. Ah. And now they have the same statue on the campus of Notre Dame and they call it Fair Catch Corby because Yeah, so putting the hand up just a little tidbit of info Good info. Yeah So we're on the approach to Father Corby the Irish Brigade chaplain You mentioned how he marched behind them and uh, went into battle with them, right? Yeah. Provide last rites and such. Mm -hmm. Good Catholic uh, precept, but you have to ask for absolution. <clears throat> there it is.
So this is another uh, State of New York in recognition of Memorial. And this is for of the services rendered by those Corps Division and Brigade Commanders at Gettysburg, not elsewhere honored on this field. And it was, uh, it was funny how when we were walking up here, Joe was talking about Daniel Butterfield. I saw that coming right across here. And you mentioned uh, Butterfield's lullaby, right? Which is Taps, modern is day taps. taps. And the reason he had his own bugle calls is because he, everybody else had the same and he wanted his guys to know the difference between their retreat or their charge or their whatever. So if someone sounded retreat, his men wouldn't flee Correct. battle. Correct. Makes sense. Yeah, pretty significant footnote in history there. Taps for it. Yeah, to this day. State of Pennsylvania Monument. It's nice to have home field advantage. They probably got like the names of every man from Pennsylvania that served etched into there that's uh that's pretty awesome we got muster rolls and i believe if i'm not mistaken that barn right there has uh holes in it cannonball holes yeah yeah from the other side i believe from incoming it's got some functional modern equipment though yeah. But the preservation of it, that's something. But that's where Pickett's Charge came from that we were talking about earlier in the video. In fact, part of the earliest part. And then the copse of trees up here was the Union Center. And you said that's where, that's uh, where that all the all the Confederate during Pickett's the last day were converging to this copse of trees. Mm -hmm. Must be redoing a monument here. Looks to be the United States Army. Isn't that something? We're wondering how old uh, some of these trees on the inside may be, considering this wrought iron fence that segregates them from everything else. Something still smells dead in there. So now standing here, remember we are at over here at um, Army of Northern Virginia. That's Lee yeah. on top of the pedestal up there. We are there. We marched across where Pickett was charred. We didn't even know we were walking across it. Yeah. But think about it now. Now you're looking at the the. Uh, doesn't seem that far, really. No, it doesn't. Linearly speaking. But as they're coming across there, they're taking fire from all these batteries. You got batteries on the left. We passed a bunch of batteries on our, our right. I mean, how do you how do you march into that? Like now I said, I don't, of them coming. I don't know what motivates a man, especially uh, in those days, to do that duty for country. Twelve thousand of them, especially before penicillin. I'd have been sunk. Yeah. <laughs> All clapped up before the war effort <laughs> kicks off. I didn't even think bad. <laughs> the old sales. But I think this is a good time to remind everybody that once again there is no I in team. However, there are two in syphilis. I should have prefaced this whole uh, video with we're not historians. You know, we're just history buffs, kind of buffing history today. Doing that thing. But uh, now at the conclusion of... Uh, who knows how many miles of road marks and stuff. Don't answer any questions with anything we told you today on yeah. the test. <laughs> yeah, don't answer anything on a test with anything we told you. But uh, basically, if anybody says who won at Gettysburg, I'd tell you, well, it was a Union victory. Nobody. It's the bloodiest battle in American history. Because everybody who died that day was an American.